Hi, my name is Hugo. I'm a designer advocate at Figma. And today, with the latest launch of variables, we are now supporting both gradients and typography. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to show all the places that you can bind variables inside the Figma UI. So let's take a look. So before we start, I think it's worth calling out how you can interact with variables inside the Figma UI using various different interactions or things that you might see. So the first thing is to call out shift and click. If I use shift and click on a field where there is a variable symbol, then this will pull up a list of the variables that I can apply for that specific field. I've also got the option of looking out for the variables icon, as you can see here. And then when it comes to layer visibility and applying Boolean variables as a type, then I can right click on that in order to be able to apply that specific variable. Next up, we have frames where we can apply corner radii, widths, and heights. So again, I can go over here, click Shift, apply a corner radius. I can also apply a width and a height. Next up, we've got auto layout, where we are looking at min, max, width, and height, in addition to the width and height that we could previously apply for a frame without auto layout. Vertical gap between, and paddings left, right, top, and bottom. Again, fairly self-explanatory. Can select this drop down, apply a max width, for example, and again inside this apply a variable. Can apply this max width. For the gap between, we have some options. I can select on this drop down here, click apply variable, and I can find uh, a list down here for the vertical gap for twelve. And then we can either apply them on an individual basis for left, right, top, bottom, or we could apply an individual value across the board. So I can select here, scroll down, and select the padding of 16 in this particular instance. And so from auto layout, we move on to grids. Within grids, you have options for column row count, grid gap, column width, and margin. Obviously, some of these will vary depending on what type of grid you've applied. So offset is obviously not something that we can apply within this, but if we set to stretch, then we have the option to be able to define that variable inside the margin. And the other thing that you can uh, look at is using the mode switcher, the ability to switch between say small and large for that. Moving on to colors and gradients, obviously colors exist in loads of different parts of the Figma UI. So rather than touching upon all of these, I'm just gonna show you how you apply it inside of a fill and then it's it's basically the same premise uh, every time that you see the little uh, square in order to be able to apply it. So I can click here and then click on libraries. And this is where I have my list of different colors. So maybe uh, for this entire background, I want to turn it to this bright yellow. For gradient stops, um, I've applied a bunch of them already in this list. Again, they just appear at the bottom here. I can detach uh, that specific example, click on here, click on libraries, and then apply that again. Very, very straightforward. Moving on to effects, there are options for X and Y position, blur, spread, and color. So if I select um, this ellipse here, you can see under this drop shadow that I could apply various different values within this. Let's take an example of 16 and maybe down to 12. And you can actually see that we've already got one applied uh, for the uh, stroke weight um, here. And that's actually added by holding down shift again. And that's where I can select a different uh, stroke weight. So if I wanted to maybe go up 16, I could apply that that way. For text content and typography, it's also important to show the distinction between those two. So depending on whether you have a style applied or not, uh, knowing where to apply the variable for that text content to be able to inform that from content you've got stored inside of a collection, sort of the names of things. Um, this is how you kind of apply them differently. So with a style, you'd select the symbol here. So I'm going to type grown in, and that's then going to apply that specific variable. And then within the context of a an unstyled piece of text, I can select the variable from here and do the same again. For applying the different type properties inside of a style, you need to click on the style first, then click on the settings, and then make those property adjustments from inside of the style itself. And then for an unstyled piece of text, you can actually do exactly the same process by applying them within this context. So I can maybe set this to Josephine Sands. I can go into bold and apply a variable here, 
and the bold weight. This will also support number values if there's the equivalent within that context. And then I could also do things like the line height and the font size within it too. So that now I should be able to switch between type one and type two from inside of my local variables collection where I've got different um, definitions defined between each of the modes. And finally, we come to components where we can look at binding text strings based on a variant name and booleans uh, for toggling layer visibility. Now, booleans for toggling layer visibility is something you'll tend to see just in the context of prototyping. For binding text strings to variant names, this is often set when you want to be able to set a parent level frame and which you want the content below it to change, but you can also use this within the context of prototyping as well. So to explain what both of those things are, I can grab a copy of uh, an instance of this specific card here. And if I want to bind the text string to the variant name, I need to have a collection where the variant names map to text strings that I have inside of a collection. So I've got a card which has options for small and large. And I can select this uh, uh, the, the variable symbol here on the on the side. I can type in um, if I actually scroll down and go to uh, my card component. You'll notice I've got something here called card size, which has an option called small. This means now that when I switch for the layer visibility under the card component, I can switch from mobile to desktop, and that will change the size of it. And then if I wanted to toggle the layer visibility of this specific element, this favorite toggle here, um, I can also bind that by right clicking on this and setting it to has favorite uh, within the context of that favorite toggle, which will then bind the Boolean for that. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and let us know if you've got any questions in the comments.